On August 28, 1963, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his iconic I Have a Dream speech in front of a massive crowd at the Lincoln Memorial. Well, this Saturday is the anniversary of that march on Washington. And now King's family and groups across the country are planning to march on for voting rights. I mean, Jens Gaynor Hall has more in tonight's cover story. I come here to urge every person under the sound of my voice to go to the polls on the 3rd of November and vote your conviction. At the core of the civil rights movement. On the, prize, hold on, hold on. the struggle for equality and the power of the vote. He used to say that uh, a voteless people is a powerless people. And one of the most important steps that we could take is that short step to the ballot box. But now some fear the country is taking big steps backwards. The nonpartisan Brennan Center for Justice says so far this year, at least 18 states have passed laws restricting access to the vote, including measures targeting mail ballots and limiting early voting, even though there is no evidence of widespread voter fraud. Here in Georgia, you, we have um, a provision that, are, that is now put in place where you have oversight over elections and those committees actually would have the um, would have the power to overturn the election of people. You also have closing down of precincts. And all of these, I might add, are in targeted in black and brown, heavily black and brown areas. Martin Luther King III and his wife, Andrea, say we're at a critical juncture in the fight for democracy. Freedom is not something at this point moment that just exist eternally. Uh, we have to earn that. And so while I'm greatly disappointed, I'm sure my dad would be greatly disappointed. I know John Lewis is greatly disappointed, Dr. C.T. Vivian and so many others who helped open these doors. Um, my view is, again, no matter what, we have to remain vigilant. And on Saturday, the anniversary of the March on Washington, they're leading March On for voting rights in D.C., with events also planned in cities across the country, in person and virtually. It's very emotional for me. I'm a civil rights baby. Jackie Alge is a director with SEIU Healthcare and the founder of Women's March Chicago. I remember walking with my grandmother, holding her hand, to walk to Green Grove Baptist Church on Marquette Avenue, uh, Marquette Road rather, to vote for the very first time. And uh, those are some indelible memories for me that I will cherish the rest of my life, but it keeps me at this, on this fight, on this journey, to make sure that we protect voting rights for all. She's heading to the D.C. March and helped to organize Chicago's event, which will be virtual. It's all an effort to register new voters and mobilize people in the push for federal protections that have stalled in the Senate. Senate is only an obstacle when the policy is flawed and the process is rotten. This bill would constitute a federal government takeover of elections. It would constitute a massive power grab by Democrats. It's up to all of us to protect that right. This is a test of our time. The flurry of recent legislation at the state level was fueled by blue winds in red states and stolen election lies, while the muscle of the Voting Rights Act has been stripped away by the Supreme Court. In Texas, a group of Democrats fled the state to try to block election legislation. We have seen myths of widespread voter fraud be carried out in a very racialized way in the Midwest and beyond. And locations and communities that have been the target of this sort of extreme suspicion are often the centers of civic life for people of color. Ami Gandhi is a senior counsel with the Chicago Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights. Illinois is among states that just expanded voting access, but she says there's a lot of work ahead. The threats to our democracy are grave. Unfortunately, the more that voters have gotten motivated to go out there to have their voices heard at the polls, the more that we've seen this clampdown from lawmakers 
who are threatened by that. It is disheartening, but you know, times change, people don't, and so you always have those who want to stay in power. Jeffrey Howard is heading from Chicago to the D.C. March with a bus full of SEIU Local 73 union members. People died, gave a gave their lives to make sure we had the right to vote. And so um, I think it tells folks not to be afraid that we're standing up, we're standing strong, and we're going to continue to move forward. And the King family says moving forward often comes with setbacks. So 58 years after the original March on Washington, they're marching on. If we endure, if we continue to advance, we will make progress. And that's what people have to be willing, unfortunately, to do. One day we may not have to do this, but today, right now, now is the time for us to engage. Gaynor Hall, WGN News.